Hi, I'm John Starling and I'm joined today with Richard Regan and we're talking about no ops in a serverless world. So Richard, but is serverless really inevitable? For me, John, for many applications, yes. Serverless implementations benefit from the infinite on-demand scalability, only paying for what you use, benefiting from the global scale of the public cloud vendors. In this model, there's no need to pay for idle server time as they are serverless, there's significantly less operational overhead. Now it's really interesting, this trend is called no ops in a serverless world, because there are still servers, right Richard? <laughs> Absolutely, John. Though the underlying servers are fully managed by the public cloud vendors, so you don't have to manage them. No need to purchase and wait for hardware to arrive, install operating systems that need to be patched and secured, or deploy application environments that need to be kept up to date. In serverless, you only write and deploy your code, freeing up significant capital and resources. Of course, there's still some operational activities required, so no or less ops is probably more appropriate. So for you, what, what are the real financial benefits of moving to no ops and serverless? Well, today operations typically covers over half of all IT spend. So moving to no ops and serverless allows you to target cost reduction across that majority of spend. With the money saved, there's scope to focus on innovation and growth, which ultimately is where the real benefits of cloud, no ops and serverless are realized. For me, the real benefits have to be around agility, scalability, speed to market, and access to technologies that you can't easily provide in your own data center. Exactly. If you look at Pokemon Go, they used serverless databases and application services to manage the data of millions of users in real time. With a minimum team supporting the service, they scaled to over 500 million users in only 19 days, a capability impossible without using cloud and nearly impossible without using serverless and no ops. For many, this sounds almost too good to be true. What are the main challenges to adoption you see with your clients? For me, John, there are three. The first, as with many aspects of cloud, there's a shortage of talent. Functions and a range of serverless capabilities are relatively new, meaning there's an extremely small pool of experienced talent to tap into today. Secondly, and related, while the market is maturing, the associated tools to develop and monitor serverless solutions are also evolving. This brings me on to the third element, legacy complexity. Today, I think serverless is more suited to new or less complex systems. I'd not want to migrate a core banking platform by rewriting it to a no-ops serverless model. That said, who knows where this trend will go in the coming years. Indeed, it sounds like this is a trend that will be with us for a while to come. For those not already on the journey, where should people start? I'd start simple. Train a few enthusiastic individuals to build capability on non-critical systems. Show early benefits to your organization and take it from there. The three main public cloud providers, Amazon, Microsoft and Google, all have free environments and training is available, and for low volumes of consumption, this can even be free for some services. Regarding the best workloads, look for use cases with variable traffic demands requiring highly fluctuating infrastructure utilization, and make sure you can effectively develop and operate your services, then build up from there. Sounds sensible to me, Richard. Thank you very much. Thanks, John. So, it feels like it's gonna be a fascinating year ahead as we develop serverless solutions and move to a no ops, or certainly less ops, in the public cloud.